Okay, let's look at optimizing a non-standard linear programming problem. And so what do we mean by non-standard? It's not in the standard maximization form, nor the standard minimization form. So we can see on this particular problem, it does say minimize, and yet it's not a standard minimization problem due to some problems with the constraints. This would need to be a greater than or equal to to be a standard minimization problem. Okay, it's not standard maximization because the original objective function we are minimizing and also because of an inconsistency with the inequality constraints. So to approach the non-standard problems, one thing we can do is instead of minimizing w equals 3y sub 1 plus 2y sub 2 plus 3y sub 3, we can maximize its opposite. So in other words, we want to say maximize introduce a new variable, maybe z, equals the opposite of w. That's a negative 3y sub 1 minus 2y sub 2 minus 3y sub 3. So as we turn this into a maximization problem then, the less than or equal to constraint is fine. We'll introduce a slack variable to pick up the slack. But on the second inequality constraint, it's not a less than or equal to, which is what we would need for a maximization problem. Therefore, we have surplus. So we'll introduce a different surplus variable. We'll see how to do that in a minute. So as I approach this problem, then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the inequalities and add in the corresponding slack and surplus variables. The first linear inequality constraint gives us 2y sub 1, plus 3y sub 2, plus 6y sub 3, plus our slack variable s sub 1, equals 60. Our second inequality constraint gives us y sub 1, plus 4y sub 2, plus 5y sub 3, and then we're going to subtract off the surplus s sub 2 to get us back down to 40. And from here, we want to move into writing our initial tableau. Okay, so for our initial tableau, notice that our slack variable works just as before. We have our one entry. The surplus variable, though, notice that it's a negative one equals 40. That's because we're trying to subtract out the surplus. Okay, we can make a note here that these are our non-basic variables. Okay, also note it appears that we have a feasible solution that's optimal because there are no negative entries. But it's really not optimal, and the reason it's not optimal is because technically we're not even in the feasible region yet. And the reason we know that is because based on our simplex algorithm we know we hit an optimal solution when we have our variables and our slack. And surplus variables are non-negative. And if we were to pull out the basic solution at this point, we can see y sub 1 is 0, y sub 2 is 0, y sub 3 is 0, s sub 1 is 60, and s sub 2 is a negative 40. So again, that needed to be positive or zero. Okay, so what makes this different than the standard maximization or standard minimization problem is that in our initial tableau, we're not in the feasible region yet. So we need to do some work to get us into the feasible region. So we can't interpret the last row. Okay, so let's pick up then with the idea that we are not feasible because of the negative one entry. And so our next approach then is we have to figure out how can we pivot so that we can get into the feasible region. Okay, so we're going to have to work a little differently here to figure out where to pivot. And the difference is in how we choose the pivot column. Now keep in mind there are multiple approaches to this. Our textbook is using this approach. If you've seen linear programming before, um, you may have heard of something called the Big M method or possibly what's called a two-phase method.
Um, I'm going to be using the approach that our book takes, which again is to identify the, the row that causes the problem. In this case, it's the negative 1 and the 40. And I'm going to look in this row and find the first po or the positive entry that's the furthest to the left and make that our pivot column. Once we've found our pivot column, then we want to go back and choose the uh, pivot element by the same type of ratios that we were doing before. So we'll look at 60 divided by 2, which is 30, and 40 divided by 1, which is 40. And so the smallest non-negative ratio there is the 30. Therefore, we're going to choose the 2 to pivot on. Okay, so to pivot in that first row, first element, we would need to take a half row 1 and store that in row 1. And then take a negative 1 row 1, add it to row 2, store it in row 2. Negative 3 row 1 plus row 3, store it in row 3. Here are the corresponding uh, functions that we can use on our TI-84 plus calculator. And if we do that, we'll get this resulting tableau. And now, again, now that we know that the idea of how to determine if a, if a tableau is giving us a feasible region or not, we can see that S sub 2 equals a negative 10. Therefore, we're really still not in the feasible region yet, so we can't go back to our normal pivoting. Again, we would see that that negative 10 S sub 2 is negative 10 is caused by the second row. So if we look to the second row then, we want to find the positive entry that's farthest to the left, and that's going to give us our pivot column. So it appears our pivot column is right here. Now to determine the pivot element, we want to go back to our ratios. 30 divided by 3 halves is the same thing as 30 times 2 thirds, which is 20 and 10 divided by 5 halves is the same thing as 10 times 2 fifths, which is 4. And so our pivot element appears to be at the 5 halves. So let's come up with the appropriate row operations and then pivot one more time and see what happens. Okay, so these are the row operations then that need to be performed on the tableau. 2 fifths row 2 stored into row 2, negative 3 halves row 2 plus row 1 stored into row 1, and 5 halves row 2 plus row 3 stored into row 3. And here are their corresponding functions on the TI-84. So let's look at the tableau we get after that pivot. So again, after each pivot operation, when we're not in the feasible region, we want to stop and look and see, did we finally make it into the feasible region? So here, if we pull out the basic solution, we can see y sub 1 is 24, y sub 2 is 4, y sub 3 is non-basic, so it is 0. s sub 1 and s sub 2 are non-basic, so their values are 0. And we can finally see that there are no negative values, therefore we're finally in the feasible region. The problem is we're still not optimal. The reason we know we're not optimal now is because we are at least feasible and we have negative entries in the last row. We have not yet arrived at the optimal solution. That means we need to go back and choose our pivot column and pivot element as we did back in the beginning of the chapter. So remember the pivot column is chosen by finding the most negative number in the last row. And then the pivot element is chosen by looking at the ratios. It's 24 divided by 9 fifths, which is the same thing as 24 times 5 ninths. And then likewise, 4 divided by 4 fifths, which is 4 times 5 fourths. 4 times 5 fourths gives us 5, and 24 times 5 ninths is 40 thirds, which is 13 and 1 third. So picking the smallest positive ratio tells us to pivot on the four-fifths.